Okay, a little project going on today. Um, my brother-in-law Luke, who's behind the camera and does all the film work, has moved down to New South Wales as well, and he wants a little aquaponic system set up here. He's seen how good my system's going. And uh, we've got a nice little vacant space here, um, right at his back door. And we've gone and got a couple of bathtubs, so we're going to show you the complete from nothing to set up today. Let's go. So we just put down a little timber so we don't scratch the tiles here on the back veranda. Uh, we've just brought up the two bathtubs here just for a, for a quick configuration check. Wanted to make sure that the bathtubs were going to fit okay. So we've got our bits of wood down the bottom, some Bessa blocks here just to lift this up a bit. This will be our grow bed draining straight into our sump or our fish tank. So at the moment it looks pretty good and now we just need to get on to the, uh, the plumbing side of things. As we've taken the plug out of the bath. No problems there. Had a tank fitting, and I've just put that, that tank fitting straight in there. And uh, here's the auto siphon. Still have to cut a few holes in that in a moment, but the general components are, that's the drain, straight into the tank fitting. That's the bell that goes over. So the water has to come up to that level before it drains, and uh, this is a bit of a protective cover. We need to put some holes in this so the water can get through. One auto siphon, ready to rock and roll. So that's been very, very painless. Um, it's come together in a few minutes. Obviously I had this together already, but as far as changing the bathtub over to something that uses an auto siphon, really straightforward. Now we're going to put uh, the hydroton clay beads, clay balls in this particular bathtub, but uh, we've got a fair few uh, bricks laying around. We just thought we'd put a layer of bricks in the bottom to basically fill it out a little bit so we don't have to use so many of the clay balls. So I'm just going to lay these in the bottom and that'll bring it up a bit. Still provides plenty of surface area for our friendly bacteria and there'll be at least a couple of hundred mils of hydroton on top of that. So it's just a really good way of filling out the, the space underneath. on in the bathtub now. We haven't got all the plumbing uh, fixed up yet but we do have the auto siphon in obviously and we're just giving this a wash off. Uh, you'll find that uh, you know during storage and transportation and that you have quite a bit of residue coming off the hydroton and uh, we just want to wash that off so it doesn't dirty things up too much for our fish. So we'll run run the hose through for probably two or three cycles till the water clears up a bit. Hook up our pump and uh, add our fish pretty uh, simple straightforward process. Right, we've had the system running for about an hour and basically what we wanted to do is just let the system naturally settle a bit and have any of the grit and grime and, it's, and sediment from the clay pebbles come out into the sump. We've done that and we've just given it one last rinse and now you can see down here our water's really, really nice. I've put a couple of bricks in the bottom there to keep the fish a little bit happy, something for them to swim around and hide in, and hopefully when they breed somewhere for their, their babies to get a bit of protection. Now when it comes to fish, this is the first time I've used goldfish, but uh, there's a reason for it. Now, the quantity of water here in this system is fairly minimal really. I mean, there'd probably be a couple of hundred litres in that bottom uh, fish tank part at the most. That means the water temperature is gonna fluctuate a fair bit uh, you know, from day to night. We have some pretty extreme temperatures around here. It's winter here at the moment, it can be minus four, minus five, and then up to sort of 20 degrees during the day. And it won't obviously follow that exact pattern, but somewhere in between you're gonna get quite a fluctuation. Goldfish are tough as nails. Can't kill them, they uh, will tolerate pretty poor water conditions, big variations in temperature. So for this system we're going with goldfish. Here in Australia we don't have tilapia, which are sort of the, the golden child, the golden fish of uh, systems around the world, we have to go with our natives and um, um, there's issues with that. For example, they, they again don't like those big temperature fluctuations and uh, this time of year in winter it's a bit hard to get natives anyway. We could go with trout, but trout 
you know, that's a very, very small area for trout. Goldfish are going to provide us the nutrients that we need. So, you know, and they're hardy, so I want to use them. So a little bit excited, it's all set up and really you should be letting a system cycle for four to six weeks to let the bacteria start to build up in it and so the, uh, the waste from the fish can be converted into food for the plants. But when you get it like this you want to see some plants in it don't you? So I bought a couple of lettuce from my pre-existing system to chuck in there, they look pretty good. And of course I've always got some seedlings uh, on the go so we're going to put those seedlings in here. Now because there is no bacteria in here yet, uh, the plants so it doesn't fall. The plants can um, suffer a little bit, so we'll have to, you know, top up the nutrients with, um, we'll probably put a little bit of sea soil in here and maybe some natural organic fertiliser just to start with. Nothing that's going to kill the fish, but just enough to keep the plants going until the bacteria is established, so, you know, the whole system gets working like it should.